Thank you, Ray. Ready to break. Nearly as good as John Parrott, though. The intermission sometimes uh, alters the course of a match, <coughs> and uh, Joe Perry is certainly hoping that that's going to be the case today. But of course, he's got to make it happen. Carter's pot success rate was 84% at the start of the session, now up to 90. Perry on 87. <coughs> Two and a half sessions to go in this match, and I forecast a tight finish. Well, it remains to be seen whether the mid-session interval can change things around. It does so many times. We keep mentioning it. And that's a pretty good return safety shot from Joe Perry. But he has lost seven out of the last nine frames. It's odd, really. The time that I expected Perry to be most vulnerable in this match is when he played his best in the first three frames in which he had breaks of 54, 62, 48 and 68 and that came after a dramatic late night 13-12 win over Stephen Maguire the previous evening. <coughs> but he's only won two frames in total since then. can see the reds, the three reds that are to the right of the pink and reds, but that's such a thin contact to get back down the table. Uh, he's got to get this just right. He could easily go into the pocket here. Played it well. Maybe a free shot for Joe Perry, red into the right corner, there's a gap and the black is awaiting if he could knock this in. If he doesn't go through that gap he can go around the left side of the red as we look at it so that is definitely worth the chance. the reason he missed the pot there Clive we could see how much right hand side he had on the ball to avoid the cannon it's amazing how many people when they start playing the game of snooker they think you've got to put side on the cue ball to help the pot as soon as you apply any side the pot's much more difficult as if he's maybe attempting this it might just pass the black Bit too thick though <coughs> still got a good cue ball oh, was Ali looking at the possibility of going around the back of this red no it's not on
he's in big trouble here. I thought there might have been enough room to get in behind the first red there to take the one that's near the pocket, but there's not <coughs> enough gap there. That's what he's faced with. What a clever shot that was. Okay, the red's still over the pocket, but it was a pretty good effort. Very well worked out. I think he thought he might flick this red away also. He just missed that red. If he had to move the red away from the pocket, that would have been a superb effort. I could take a good shot to get on the colour here. One. Well, that was amazing. He popped that into the right side of the pocket because look at the angle. You'd have thought the white would have hit the right side of the pocket as we look at it, and it hit the left side. Rumble. One. Now there's two reds together. I know we can't get through to them, but that could be made into a plant. But he'd have to knock one red onto it, and he can't really do that from the position he's faced with at the moment. But that is a distinct possibility. So now we know that the plant is available. Very thin safeties, very well. You might have a look at the plant again. He's coming around the table just to see he's pointing the tip at the two reds. If he can see enough of the first red, he can make it. He's got to pass another red though. But there's a gap back down the table also. Now, I think he can make this. Ali Carter won. Could have taken on the brown, but uh, with the reds well spread, preferred a certain snooker, leaving Perry in loads of trouble. Got to get an awful lot of side on this to get to this red that's sitting on its own here. Doesn't want to hit the left side of it as we look at it, and he has. That's no good. <coughs> and if he's straight on this, there's a possibility he could get on the black here. It just depends on the angle. He can screw back with a little bit of side and swing out and give himself a chance at the black or the pink here, looking at that angle. 
Now watch the side as he hits the cushion. Played it to perfection. Well, that's a little bit unlucky. It means he can't control the cue ball now. Nine. Now that was terrific to hold for the blue there and now he's given himself a superb chance but the screw back that he played on the red here now he hit this with lots of right well Hawk I'll show you exactly that's where he's aiming to hit it uh, hitting on the right side and when it hits the cushion it spins to the left and just watch the angle here years of practice and without that right hand side the cue ball would have cannon the black 14. Fifteen. he certainly is taking control of this semi-final at the moment Ali Carter Joe Perry I think that tenth frame when he made the break of 57 and looked almost certain to take it as uh, as knocked him for six a little bit you would have to say yes at the end of that 57 break he missed uh, a black off the spot 21 perhaps concentrating on a cannon but needing only a couple of pots to clinch the frame Twenty-two. But you're right, Dennis. Carter has worked up a uh, head of steam. Twenty-seven. Above all, Perry must keep <coughs> close to Carter so that uh, the problem of actually clinching the match with only a frame or so to spare comes into play. 20. It's easier to clinch a match when you're several frames 23. in front. Maybe another plant here. Yes, he can make that and still finish on black or pink. 34. <coughs> Striking the ball beautifully at the moment, Ali Carter. 41. He's getting through the ball nicely, as we say. A little bit like a golf swing when you get through the ball. You, you get a good strike on it. 42. You can screw back and leave a red into the same pocket. Just slide up past the pink and red there. You can clearly see it. Forty-eight. 
Fifty-six. Another red in colour then. It's all Carter needs to increase his lead to eight five. It's a bit straight on the black, but he won't bother about that. As Clive mentioned, the black would be enough. Joe Perry and a spot of bother. Well, he will play position, but he certainly won't strain for it. Sixty-four. Maybe the red potted the one between the two reds and the pink, but well, does it? It goes up into the corner, if not the middle. Ali Carter, 64. The 64 break, which uh, leaves Joe Perry needing two four point snookers. Had Carter potted that, uh, Perry would probably have conceded. <coughs> Any red potted by Carter would leave Perry needing four snookers. Yeah, I think Joe wants to carry on, try and get the snookers, but I think he wants to knock Ali Carter out of his stride because he had a 106 break, and then the 64. So he's the one that's flowing, and Joe hasn't been getting much table time. Now that's a nice position for the four reds to be when you need three reds, three blacks, and then you want to start looking for the two snookers. Not much chance with the reds up the other end of the table. So this to put the issue beyond reasonable doubt. One in the frame, Ali Carter. More trouble for Joe Perry as Ali Carter goes three frames clear. He leads by eight frames to five. Well, Carter is in a winning streak. He's uh, 
been pretty fluent in the last few frames once he's got an opportunity. He's accounted for the last three frames basically in four scoring visits 38, 56, 106 and 64. So he's got Perry under a lot of, lot of pressure. Well, when you think about it, Clive, eight frames out of ten he's won, which is quite something, and that really does boost your confidence. But Joe Perry's got to forget about all that's gone on this afternoon and try and just concentrate on the next few frames. He really does need to get back on winning track here, otherwise you can see this semi-final slip away from him. Thank you, frame 14. Ali Carter the break. Still a long way to go though. First to 17 wins and Carter though he's three in front hasn't uh, quite got halfway towards his target yet. A very different challenge a long match like this than the circuit's staple best of nines. Yeah, Joe's just got to try and forget about what's happened and, and, and start from here. This is where his semi-final starting, as from this moment. That's the way you've got to think. has got to do something to shake Carter because at the moment Carter is um, very confident pretty well everything's going his way yeah his safety play is going to have to be absolutely spot on to try and force Ali Carter into giving him a chance. Good shot, made sure he got the cue ball low enough. That's the famous Cliff Thorburn dump shot. Leave the white up here and dump the red up the other end of the table. to prevent a safety to the ball cushion unless you move the red and would you call that one there five, a reverse dump shot <laughs> a reverse dumper carefully gets this right because that red near the right corner is cuttable. The only problem if you took the cut on you'd be canning into the red there just to the left of it but he's now coming around to have a, a look at the angle. Maybe it's just the safety rather than trying to sneak it in. It's too risky. Little thin one here. And he has played those so well in this session.
back up a free shot this time. Ali can cut this red in and go around the back of the black. Maybe just playing the safety shot again. He hasn't looked at the possibility of snicking it into the right corner. That's far too pacey. That's just a little bit of tension to overhit it by that much. But he might just have covered everything. I think he's gotten away with that. It's all covered this side. And the other side. Well, that is very tough. And the fact that the black's not available. Wasn't easy. Is this a chance for Joe? Maybe not. You want something easier than this as a starter when you've been kept off the table for so many frames. But well played. Good queuing there. Yes, it was. But Perry, having totaled only 16 points in the last uh, three frames, has got to make that uh, initial red lead to something substantial. Might just be able to get on to the black here. Seven. The black's just available into the right corner, but has he got a good angle in this red to get over behind it? <coughs> yes. Eight. Sixteen. He was nearly a little bit careless with that. That hit the jaws. Which means he hasn't finished on the black as he intended. He can't quite hold for the red that's next to the black now. Had to play a cannon and... Um this is certainly not as good as uh, the shot he should have been playing had he potted the black, <coughs> potted the red cleanly. Where's the red going? <coughs> right over the pocket. Joe Perry, 23. He is struggling a little bit at the moment, Joe Perry. That was all caused by the black that he wobbled. It did go in, but he didn't get on his intended red. And now Ali Carter back at the table a lot quicker than he thought he would be. One.
Now that could have gone astray. Eight. <coughs> he didn't want to cannon that red, he wanted to find the gap and then he would have been perfect. He's got a long one up into the corner pocket past the yellow, but he's quite close to it. That's a tricky one. And the cut back into the right corner is just as difficult. <coughs> Might be able to play this in such a way that he goes round the back of the two reds. Well, he's cannoned the reds, but he's got the pot. And he might be able to take the yellow on here. He won't be hampered. Reds over either middle pocket. So he's got to have a go with the yellow. Well, not absolutely clear cut, but certainly a possible frame winning chance. Twelve. Keep telling you he's got a very compact cue action, Ali Carter. He's not the tallest of players, 16. but everything looks so comfortable. And the stance just looks not unlike 17. the great Joe Davis, who probably <coughs> wasn't a lot taller than Ali, I wouldn't have thought, Clive. No, but uh, Joe had uh, the cue running under his left eye, very pronounced left eye stance and the old traditional stance one foot forward to the other uh, whereas Ali is more square on when he's 22. striking mind you most of the top players now they're, 23. they're very square on compared to the old players Developed. A Thirty. Thirty seven. For a few years now, Carter has been a good enough player to win something. But it's just like to 38. that fine edge of self-belief when he's needed it most in clinching important wins. Okay. How will he be if he gets uh, close to the winning post in this, the most uh, important match of his life? One thing's for sure, if he's several frames in front, when the winning post looms up, it'll be a lot easier than if he's only one or two ahead. Thirty-nine. 
45. Yeah, he had a bit of a setback, didn't he, in 2003 when he uh, had Cronin's disease. That didn't help. He had to have hospital treatment. <coughs> yes, and he still um, has to watch himself. 50. As a result of that, had an operation. <coughs> and uh, as he said, uh, it was more serious than he, he realised at the time. <coughs> he stunned that. He didn't mean <coughs> to stun it. 51. He meant to push the cue through with a little bit of top spin, and he hit the white in the middle, and there was the stun effect. <coughs> so it's rather characteristic that he's slipped up on the verge of winning this important frame. <coughs> trying too hard. Yeah, that's where he should have finished. I'm just going to put the other white. If he finishes there, pots the black, cannons the two reds, the frame's his. But now it's all change. Just having a little think about this, whether to take the black on or not. He's 28 points, the difference. It's I'm one of those, 51. really, <coughs> when you're not playing the perfect position, you never put 100% into the pot. Now, this is a tough one that Joe's faced with. Although Carter in the end played the pot, he certainly didn't strive for position. <laughs> so Paddy could still snatch this frame. A pity for him One. that he got a kick on that red. He would have been on the pink at a different angle, but for that... Uh, let's have a look at these. Oh, the white jump right in the air, but at least the red went in. But how does he get to the two difficult reds now? He might not even bother potting Greenwood. the black. Just making sure he gets a possible snooker here. Go Perry one. <laughs> Trying to parry that. But for the kick, he would have been on the pink at an angle which would have enabled him to develop the two remaining reds. Doesn't want too much pace on this. He just wants to drop on them. No, not quite. Oh, and it could be a free ball. It could Go possibly be a free ball, this. Free ball. It is. Yes, free ball awarded when the non-offender can't hit uh, both edges of the ball on. And uh, when reds are concerned, all reds are considered as one. So another red doesn't prevent the free ball. Black nominated is the extra red. <coughs> but not a good one. shot. He's got to take another colour now, but no angle <coughs> when potting the green to get to the reds. If the blue goes, he could do it from the blue, but it would require a very good shot indeed. That's the shot that's available to him if he can judge it to develop the reds. Well, I'm not sure what he played there in the end. He's Go <coughs> Perry six. 
not the best of safeties either. Carter comes to the table, 17 in front. Possible red. Chance to clinch the frame to go 9 5 up. He can stun this in, you know, and finish on the black if he cues it well. One. the best positional shot. Eight. <coughs> Carter needed only red and colour after he potted that black. <coughs> well maybe it just goes but he should have left himself something easier. Well, you've got the perfect picture. We'll know if it's going in here. No. Well, he's got Ali the second prize. And it was a pretty clever shot because if he managed to pot the red, he just rolls tight up behind the black. It was a great chance to clinch the frame, though, at that visit before he lost position. <coughs> Carter still needs only a red and a colour to increase his lead to 9-5. Not that easy though, having to strike downwards. That's a pretty good run of the ball. Alistair just held his hand up there. Just to apologise for that little bit of good fortune. Which he was very glad of. I called him Alistair there, which uh, a couple of years ago, you know, his name is Alistair, but everyone calls him Ali Clive. What does he like? Oh, he prefers Ali. to lay a snooker there but the interesting part is whether Carter leaves the red on well he has can Joe Perry somehow hold himself together to clear these one Can he pop the yellow and hold for the yellow again? It would have to come back on its spot. Might be okay. <coughs> well, he's had to run away somewhat. And if he's dead straight on this, it needs good queuing to screw back. He wants the white back somewhere near where it is now, or even a bit further. Look where he's striking down on the cue ball. Not quite. He's still got a Five. chance. He's got <coughs> to take it to the middle pocket. Off this back cushion and up past the blue. No. No. Concentrated so much on the the white the there. Fight. He really is feeling the pressure out there. <coughs> 
So Carter needs uh, only one of the five remaining colours to secure the frame. What's the pace like? Has he got the snooker? He has. No matter how long you look at it, this type of shot, you've got to just try and get out of the snooker and hope that you can get it safe. You never know where they're going. <coughs> Chance for Perry. Who needs uh, all the colours to take the frame? Three. extension on his cue and I'm right down the line of the angle. I just think he might be able to screw this back, you know. Now if he can screw over to that side of the table, he leave the pink for the left corner. Big shot for Joe Perry. Not hard enough. He didn't get into it. He didn't get the required screw. Twelve. It wouldn't be all that bad if he only needed the pink. But uh, he also needs to get on the black. Well, I don't know if the angle's there. It would need some shot to, um, to spot the pink and come off the left side cushion and get him behind the black. I don't think the shot's on. So I think he may even refuse the pot here. No, he's gone all the way around the houses. What a shot this is. What a shot this is from Joe Perry. Thank you. Yeah, it's all the better with the tide running against him. losing streak, thereby reducing Ali Carter's lead to 8-6. Doctor, it's Martha, and I'm bringing you back to Earth. Ten. It's just like old times. Nine. Well, what are you searching for? Eight. Suntara. Launching in seven. What do I do? Six. Do not engage in battle. Five. The people are going to fight that. Two. This is our chance. Three. I told you not to launch. Doctor Who, tomorrow at 6.20 on BBC One. And if you missed the last episode, it's available now on BBC iPlayer. And with Dennis Taylor in the commentary box. Dennis, we've had an email in about you always mentioning the 85 final. It's from Steve in Romford. This was his suggestion for you. Exterminate! <laughs> Exterminate! <laughs> Was that me or him he wants to exterminate? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> That's Joe Perry stopping the rot, isn't it? Yeah, and it was, it was starting to look like worrying times for him because he'd lost all those frames on the trot and he didn't look like his, his cue was too brilliant. And uh, Ali's missed a trick there, I think. The last red that he missed, that was a, could be a big shot in that. You were muttering throughout that frame, this is a dangerous situation for Joe, dangerous time of the match. Yeah, because you can see he's struggling a little bit and you can see it's not quite you know, as easy for him as it was early on in the match. He doesn't want to get too far behind and he's done well, fantastic pink and black. Steve, what does experience tell you about the twists and turns that are obviously going to happen in the semi-final? 
Um, well, even if a player looks like he's on the ropes, like uh, halfway through that frame, uh, Joe Perry did look like, if you can make the analogy with boxing, uh, it, it still requires the other guy to keep the bloke under pressure, otherwise he can get off the hook. And that's effectively what's happened there. You can see at the end of it, Ali Carter shaking his head. He realised that he basically let the other guy back in when he was really struggling amongst the balls. And you, you do sense when the other guy is under, not just the shots he's playing, but his body language as well, uh, walking to the table, walking back to his, to his seat. So Ali Carter will be pretty frustrated. But overall, he's still got his nose in front. You said, John, he's going to pop this black and he's going to march out of the crucible. Yeah, I thought that's exactly what he'd do. He just, uh, you know, as I say, great pink and black, but then you just get out of the auditorium, just, you know, you compose yourself and let your opponents have a little think about the mistake he's just made. Plenty more twists and turns, no doubt. Just as the match appeared to be running away from Perry, he could, if he won the two remaining frames, be level at eight all overnight. Yeah, at the end of the frame, I think Steve Davis picked up on it. This was Ali as uh, Joe walked out of the arena. That little shake of the head said, I've missed a trick there. <coughs> that was a free shot for Joe because they're all covering each other here. of applause but there is a pot available into the right corner <coughs> so let's see if that last frame has restored the confidence of Joe Perry okay it's not easy to get onto a color that's the pot he's looking at and there is a bit of a gap there, he may be able to screw between, but even if he cannons the red, he'd be okay, but uh, he's got the gap, <coughs> and he got the main part of the shot. Well, and if he can get on the red that's near the black spot, and he can screw back and do that, he really will open things up. Played to perfection. And he looks right. much more confident now. It's amazing how that frame can just change things. Six. Thirteen. <coughs> Straight on the black's okay. He can screw back past his hand and leave one. Now you can see it at the end of the bunch. Oh, look at the bounce. Look at that come off the cushion. We were saying it was going so well, and suddenly you get a bounce like that. Five. Well, that's the first uh, we've had <coughs> as noticeable as that this afternoon and uh, at a very unfortunate time for Perry. He might be able to retrieve the situation. This red into the middle pocket, I think he can take it on and leave himself on the black. A little delicate shot. Depends on the angle. He might be able to hold for the pink. Yeah, it was almost straight. So he was okay <coughs> in the end. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, where's the pink going to go? Now, where's the pink going to go? If there's room between the two reds, he might be snookered on this one. No, there's room enough to go on his own spot. But it's just making it awkward striking. 28. He showed what character and what bottle he had when he came back and beat Stephen Maguire in that final frame shootout. Yes, that was a terrific win. 13 12 over a player who is going to finish second in the end of season Bobby rankings. Paul. Them with just uh, a few more inches of pace. <laughs> and now the stun run through shot. This is one of the toughest shots to play in the game, this red straight. Well, it's just off straight. So he was able to come off the cushion. Want. There's the difference, so he's almost over the winning line, 66. and he'll just be one frame behind. <coughs> it's a turnaround again in this semi-final. 67. His highest break in the match has been a break of 84 in frame 6. He's okay. 93. That's another super shot. <coughs> okay, the frame's over, but he cued that beautifully. 94. This will be Perry's uh, 
fifth century of the tournament, the 57th in all, <laughs> pursuing the all-time record of 1831 championship. The 80th of his career, and Carter looks very rueful. He missed the boat in the last frame, which Perry snatched brilliantly. And uh, Perry <coughs> used that time turn, tight turner, 109, to make this. Uh, Excellent century. One hundred and twelve. <laughs> the semi final is really back on again. Sixteen. John Parrott said he couldn't pick a winner, and that's the case again because he's closing the gap. Which looked like it was going to open to three frames, but. 127. 127 on the frame for Penny. Food for thought for Carton. That. A splendid break of 127 from Perry. Reduces <coughs> Perry's deficit. 8-7. Now, that was a very well controlled break, but one unexpected problem did come Perry's way. Yeah, he was playing to screw back and leave a choice of reds, one into the corner that he's potting the black, one into the middle. He cued it perfectly and uh, he thought it was going to be okay, but what's the white? It, well, Joe's threw his hand out, he couldn't believe it. Um, Without the bounce, he probably would have finished Hawkeye, I'll show you. He would have finished somewhere around there and had a choice of reds. But then, in the end, Clive, he got this awkward bridging, but he finished straight on the one and he could hold for the pink. So, it didn't penalise him too much there, the bad bounce. <laughs> so, the gap is now only one frame. Perry is starting to fancy his chance of starting the penultimate session tomorrow morning, level at eight all. Thanks, Ali. <coughs> Thank you, the final frame of the session. Ali Carter to break. Didn't intend to double the red that far back up. <coughs> yeah, that was a strange one from Joe to hit it that hard. I may have to put a little trace aside on it, but no, the way he's curing it, he can pot it direct. And he can get on the black also. <coughs> one. Well, if he finishes the right side of the blue, that's even better because he can go straight into the pink for the ball now. So, key shot coming up. That mistake from Joe Perry could be costly if this works out. Now, as long as the red 
isn't covered with the blue when the blue's re-spotted. Is he unlucky? Six. Well, he's walking around the table briskly, so maybe he can see enough of it, and he can, and might just be able to. Well, let's see if he drops it in. He'd leave a chance of the blue. If he plays it with a bit of pace, might be able to get the black, but I think just dropping it in might be better. Yep. Set. <coughs> This was how Perry let Carter in. Hit the red harder than intended. Twelve. But for the kiss would have been closer to this red. Now is he going to be fully committed? There is a possible pot on and he could stun round the back of the black if he hits it harder then he will head up towards the table but that's a distinct possibility for him here well, it's tripped the other way but it's ok 13 it was all about the pot Okay, to flick the red like that and finish in the black. A little bit of good fortune, but it deserved it after the pot. Twenty. That was a bit unlucky. He played the cannon well and he got the white to stop there. But everything's a little awkward. Looks to be one that would cut back into the right corner. He's going to need the rest to do it. Beautiful. Beautifully played. 31. Pretty good now. Twenty-eight. Well, even though Halley lost the last two frames, if he could convert this chance and take this last frame of the session he'd be more than pleased it would mean that he won the session 6-2 after losing the opening session 5-3 32 a pretty good performance <coughs> Just looking at the bunch, I'm not sure if the two reds near the pink spot are available into the left corner. The 
seem to be covering each other into the right corner. The white somewhere near the pink wouldn't be bad here. If those reds go. The must do. He's played it well. 36. Yeah, a little bit further and closer to the reds would have been better for this next shot. The little cannon has held them on the pink. <coughs> Pretty high standard for this session. 43. His pot success rate has gone up 6% to 90, and, and Joe Perry sitting at 89, so they really have improved. And Ali's had a century break. 44. He's had a, a 56, a 64, a 51, well, two 51s, and Joe Perry's had a 127. And a 57. There's been a 50 break in every frame except one this afternoon. <coughs> 50. <coughs> which makes another red possible to the same corner well every credit to these two players first time here at the Crucible Theatre in the semi-final and they've put on a good match for us and it's going to get more and more interesting with each frame. <coughs> 65. So, simple frame ball for Carter. 56. So we led 5 2 for Carter. Three women. The last frame last evening, and uh, the first five this afternoon went 8 5 up. Can't wait for tomorrow morning session, Clive. Can Joe Perry get Carter, do you think? 72. Think? 73. Well, he's certainly given himself uh, a better chance from 8 5 down by reducing that to 8 7. But he's going to be 9 7 behind, presumably tomorrow morning. Seventy nine. Eighty. If the reds go, he can slip past them on the right side of the table. Well, he can get to them from the pink, so obviously the pot. Been a terrific effort this from Ali Carter. 86. 87. <coughs> 93. Arian Williams having Four. to run around the table at the moment. Where Ali's playing. Okay, Carter's second century of the session. 101. 103. He made a 106 to go 7-5 uh, up.
106. In the last frame, Joe Perry made a break of 127. <laughs> it's amazing what he can do. 110. When the, the frame result is no longer in doubt. Yeah, book these boys for an exhibition, and this is the sort of stuff you'll see. And there's another exhibition shot. <laughs> Twenty-one. So, Ali ends the session with a total clearance of 128 and leads Joe Perry by nine frames to seven going into tomorrow morning's penultimate session.